Yo, if you clutch it, I'll, I'm cash up you five dollars, bro. <laughs> Oh my god, oh, man. Man. Today's video sponsor is GVG Mo, bringing you all the software deals you need, like Windows 10, Windows 11, Office 2021 with a new Windows 11 design, and even Windows Server 2022. For all of these, you can use my SKG discount code for 25% off, getting a Windows 10 serial key for only $16. Then use the key on your Windows settings, and you'll have an activated system. Hello guys, Ancient Gameplays, I'm Fabio Pisco and welcome to my channel. And before anything, if you just hear some background noise like music, my little cousin entering the room like two or three times, it's normal because, well, we have family in the house, uh, so it's a dinner, so yeah. It's the usual stuff, I guess. You're teasing me, you naughty naughty. <laughs> so today's video we have a comparison between PCI Express 1.1, 2, 3 and 4. And the point of this video is to test the PCI Express bandwidth effects on the GPU, in this case the RX 7900 XTX, which is the most powerful GPU that I own. Uh, so I do not own the, the 4090, otherwise it would be the 4090, but it is on the 7900 XTX and the bandwidth effects on that same scenario. Also, if you're asking yourself how exactly am I testing these, well, uh, I'm testing these with options on the motherboard. You can go to the advanced settings, PCI options, and you can select the PCI uh, version that you can or want to use. In this case, you have several options from the 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, and 4.0. And that's exactly what I'm testing because I could test with older CPUs to test, for example, a PCI Express 1 uh, CPU in that scenario, PCI Express 2 in that scenario, for example, uh, 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 2600K, for example, from Intel. I can test, for example, a PCI Express 3 CPU in that scenario, let's say the 3770K. I could do that, but in that scenario, I wouldn't be testing the bandwidth effects on the GPU performance, I would just be testing CPUs. And that's not what I want. And one of the reasons that actually made me want to make this video um, was due to the to the current market that you ha that you we and you have right now, which is lots of NVMe's, and we have things like direct storage, uh, AMD Smart Texas storage that is supposed to come soon, uh, and we have lots of of calls in between the CPU and GPU because games are using more memory. Uh, ray tracing also has more calls in between the CPU and GPU. So, so yeah, basically, I wanted to know how it would affect one of these top tier GPUs like the 7900 XTX. So the question of the video, is PCI Express 3 finally dead? Do you absolutely need PCI Express 4 to take the most out of your GPU or not? Starting with Plague Tale Requiem, a pretty well optimized title by the way, we can see that even PCI Express 1.1 does its job quite well, considering this standard was introduced in 2005, delivering 151.9 average FPS, which consists in 85% of PCI Express 4 performances. As the resolution goes up and the amount of FPS being handled by the CPU gets smaller, the difference in between versions also does, with PCI Express 1.1 being just 4 FPS behind PCI Express 4 at 4K, which is very interesting to see. And in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, the difference is even smaller and the variations are mostly in the minimums. In terms of average FPS, even at 1080p and over 250 FPS, there are virtually no difference in between PCI Express 2, 3 and 4, with PCI Express 1.1 being really close in terms of averages, but fairly behind in terms of minimums, meaning that we have a more stuttery gameplay. Something that goes away at high resolutions, as it seems this game just loves a beefy GPU and CPU instead of anything else, with all the versions having roughly the same performance at 4K. Hogwarts Legacy starts showing some differences in between each standard. At 1080p, the average FPS numbers are much apart, with PCI Express 1.1 still being able to deliver 84% of PCI Express 4 performances, but in the 1% lows though, it is only able to achieve 62.8%, dropping from 104.8 to 65.9 FPS. And this happens even at 4K as this game pushes the CPU in a tough way, having a need for more calls in between CPU and GPU. 
And with as all said, PC Express 3 is a bit behind, but still delivering very good performance, with even PC Express 2 being considerably ok, meaning that games are indeed getting more demanding in terms of PCI bandwidth, but the older standards can still deliver decent performance. Star Wars Jedi Survivor is a game that's quite CPU heavy, in, at least in some parts of the game, and even with that said, the difference in between PCI Express versions is quite small, with PCI Express 3 somehow delivering the best performance at 1080p, and older PCI Express versions doing quite well at 1440p and 4K apart from PCI Express 1.1, that has considerably lower 1% lows. But well, we're talking about a version released in 2005, so according to my book, this is really impressive. Forza Horizon 5 is one of those games known to need a considerable amount of bandwidth to perform well, and it seems this is the case indeed. But at the same time, it is not even close to be the worst scenario. We do have a slightly lower performance with the older PCI Express versions, with only PCI Express 1.1 being considerably slower. I mean, PCI Express 2 was introduced 16 years ago and it is still delivering 94% of PCI Express 4 performances in this game at 1080p. And even better, 98% at 1440p and virtually equal performance at 4K. 16 years ago. Moving to The Last of Us, we have more of the same. At 1080p, we have all versions delivering virtually the same results, very close to each other, apart from PCI Express 1.1, only delivering 74% of PCI Express 4 performance. But this time we do have an interesting scenario, where PCI Express 1.1 was able to deliver more FPS at 1440p than 1080p maybe due to the workload pending more to the GPU side, making the PCIe bandwidth a little less relevant, hence increasing the FPS numbers. Very interesting indeed. Cyberpunk 2077, like Hogwarts Legacy, shows pretty consistent results, with each older PCI Express version having slightly lower FPS than the more recent one, even at 4K. At 1080p, for example, PC Express 3 delivers basically the same 1% lows, but 14 FPS less in the averages. But even PCI Express 1.1 was able to deliver 181.3 average FPS, which will be more than enough for most people, with the only disadvantage being the considerably lower 1% lows. Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart is a recently released title that, like Forspoken, uses direct storage to achieve much lower loading times. Direct storage does use PCI bandwidth to do its job properly and the GPU will automatically request textures from your disk instead of asking your CPU that then will ask your disk and so on so on so on. As for the results, they are actually better than I expected, with the older PCI Express versions being quite slower overall, but with PCI Express 3 still doing an excellent job. There are some things that you cannot see in the benchmarks though, like for example the fact that PCI Express 1.1 and PCI Express 2, when loading the game, will deliver you a 1 second black screen before actually loading it, while there was no such thing with PCI Express 3 and PCI Express 4. As for Microsoft Flight Simulator, the results surprised me a lot. Even at 1080p and 1440p at over 150 average FPS, even PCI Express 1.1 did its job without any kind of issues. Maybe because the texture streaming is way less here due to most of it being done internet sided. I don't really know, but this game does love CPU performance, but doesn't care at all for PCI Express bandwidth. Very interesting. And it seems we have the same case scenario for PUBG, as even at 1080p and 1440p, the only version losing a bit of performance versus the others is the older PCI Express 1.1, meaning that if you are a PUBG player, you want the fastest CPU that you can get for higher FPS numbers, but you definitely do not need a PCI Express 4 motherboard. Odd, but interesting. Fortnite is a different case though, since it is using Unreal Engine 5 and the X12. We can see a very well scaled difference in between all PCI Express versions at all resolutions, with PCI Express 1.1 once again being considerably slower, mostly in the 1% lows. PCI Express 3 though is very close to PCI Express 4, but this indicates that in the near future, PCI Express 4 may perform considerably better than PCI Express 3, and will maybe be to PCI Express 5 what PCI Express 3 is to PCI Express 4 now. 
God of War uses the X11, but it is also one of the most bandwidth starving games that I've ever seen using that same API. In this game, even the oldest PCI Express version tested is running things perfectly fine apart from some texture streaming issues here and there, that's normal due to the lower bandwidth, even when delivering very good 1% lows, which is odd to see from such an older version. This is what I pay internet for. And since we've seen the rasterization results now, what about ray tracing scenarios? Since in some scenarios, the amount of bandwidth needed to process all those rays, all those calls uh, in between the CPU and GPU is much bigger, or in this case, much higher. Will the performance be that much lower in older PCI Express versions? Starting with Resident Evil 4, well, that seems to not be the case at all. It seems that ray tracing here is hugely GPU-sided, so the performance difference in between versions is almost null, with well-scaled but small differences that sincerely wouldn't make any difference for 90% of gamers, even when using PCI Express 1.1. Spider-Man Remastered, on the other hand, is a joy to benchmark. This is the first game we see such a huge difference in between all PCI Express versions, and that happens because this game's ray tracing is also quite CPU demanding, so the amount of PCI Express bandwidth needed to process ray tracing is quite bigger. At 1080p, PCI Express 1.1 is only able to achieve 45% of PCI Express 4 performance, with PCI Express 2 being able to deliver 67% and PCI Express 3 88%. These are very interesting results showing how much PCI bandwidth can make a difference if the game really needs it, with even PCI Express 3 being quite slower apart from 4K, where the system wasn't able to push more than 88.6 FPS. Now, do you think PCI Express 5 will also deliver better performance in this game when the new GPUs come out? Well, I guess I'll test it out when the moment comes. Moving to a full ray tracing game, well, the differences are there, but not even close to the ones presented in Spider-Man Remastered. In this game, only PCI Express 1.1 suffers quite a bit in terms of averages, but mostly 1% lows with all the other PCI Express versions doing their job pretty well, even more at 1440p and 4K. And this shows that not all the ray tracing scenarios are affected by the PCI Express bandwidth. And to finish the ray tracing benchmarks, we have Doom Eternal, and we finally have a good difference at all resolutions like in Hogwarts Legacy, Fortnite and Cyberpunk 2077. In this game, PCI Express 1.1 is still delivering over 220 average FPS at 1080p, but it is also delivering 86 average FPS less than PCI Express 4, with PCI Express 2 also delivering a considerably lower result, and PCI Express 3 somehow, again, delivering better results than PCI Express 4 in some scenarios. But we're talking about gameplay benchmarks, so the margin of error is also quite bigger. And to finish the analysis, we have the 16 games averages, including rasterization and ray tracing games. And even with the massive differences such as the one seen in Spider-Man Remastered, PCI Express 1.1 is still able to achieve an average of 84% of PCI Express 4 performances, which is an outstanding result for a 2005 version. As the resolution goes up, the differences get smaller since we're producing less FPS, so there are also a lot less calls in between the CPU and GPU, making the PCIe bandwidth less needed. And well guys, now that you've seen the results, is PCI Express 3 finally dead? Well, no. Of course not. Not even PCI Express 2 is dead, although it has less performance, not even PCI Express 2 is dead, let alone PCI Express 3. But as you've seen in Spider-Man Remastered, for example, the difference is huge in between each PCI Express version, meaning that in future games with future, well, with future engines, with like Unreal Engine 5, uh, some heavier games in some even more powerful GPUs, PCI Express 3 might actually be dead in, let's say, two or three years. But not yet. Not now. Yeah, boy. The usual case scenarios where PCI Express 3 or PCI Express 4 or 2 or then make more difference 
uh, is when we actually have less PCIe lanes. Because for example, in some uh, recent and lower tier GPUs, like for example, the RTX 4060 Ti, 4060, the RX 7600, 6600 XT, 6650 XT, they only have eight PCI Express lanes instead of having the usual 16. Meaning that PCI Express 4 on those cards will have the same bandwidth as PCI Express 3 on a card that has 16 lanes. The performance difference although isn't much and the performance difference won't be much in between PCI Express 3 and PCI Express 4 as long as you do not go out of VRAM. If you are going out of VRAM, so if you are trying to use uh, way um, way better textures that you should and your card is running out of VRAM, it, the card needs to refresh itself and it uses the PCI Express bandwidth to refresh itself. So if you're running PCI Express 3 on those same scenarios with only half the lanes, well, you will suffer in terms of performance. But overall, the difference in between PCI Express 3 and PCI Express 4 won't be that big, as you can see, for example, in this video passing right now in the screen of the RX 7600. So once again, is PCI Express 3 dead and buried? No. no. Will PCI Express 3 start performing considerably lower in the next two or three years? Well, maybe. Will PCI Express 5 perform considerably better in the new to come titles, like maybe a new Spider-Man, like Spider-Man 2, in some newer titles that actually take advantage of that same bandwidth when using ray tracing? Well, possibly. Don't really know, but it seems like it. And well guys, that's all for today's video, thanks a lot for watching, this video was mostly in the name of science because I really wanted to show you the difference in between PCI Express 1, 2, 3 and 4 and I'm using PCI Express 1.1 and not the 1.0 because as I select the PCI Express 1 on the motherboard it will automatically use PCI Express 1.1 so it is PCI Express 1.1 versus 2 versus 3 versus 3 sorry versus 4 and as I told you the the results are actually pretty interesting in some scenarios with even PCI Express 1.1 doing its job wonderfully well interesting once again thanks for watching don't forget to like subscribe and share this video as it really helps a lot and yeah See you in the next one. Why not?